We have seen quite drastic declines around the UK coast of our seagrass and estimates say it could have been even up to 92%. My name's Thea Cox, I'm a project manager in the Conservation and Policy Department at the Zoological Society of London and we're here today at an intertidal seagrass meadow near Whitstable in Kent because we've started a project looking at restoring seagrass. We are trialling two different techniques. One has been transplants, which is where you take cores of existing seagrass and you move that to a new location. And this is to encourage vegetative growth where the plant spreads via rhizome. And then the other technique we're trying is to harvest seeds from donor meadows and plant those seeds out. So today we're going to use a method called dispenser injection seeding. We use a mix of mud from these donor beds and the seed and you inject that into the ground. This is our modified sealant gun. It's got a mixture of mud and seed, seagrass seed mix in it. Each squeeze of the gun, we have a volume of mud seed mix that's coming out, which hopefully has about two seeds per blob. Different projects are trialling different densities to find out what's the optimum. And then we'll monitor how the seeds develop from there. Ultimately, the idea is to work out how much donor material you need, because you want to minimise the amount of donor material you're taking from the wild. We're starting to kind of look at the sediment type and whether some sites are better suited to seagrass. We continuously monitor temperature and light of the water. We're going to put out some current and wave loggers to kind of look at how easy it is to restore in places with higher wave energy. So we are building up knowledge around this species. Sostra noltii is lesser known and lesser studied. We're kind of learning all about its kind of environmental preferences, what techniques work for it, to kind of find like the best restoration techniques and just learn more about the biology of this species. We're here in the Thames estuary and the factors that are affecting pollution here in the estuary are quite wide ranging and can go from pollutants from agricultural sources, pollutants from our sewage and water treatment services, from road runoff, all of these factors and all of these influences come into our estuary. Elevated nutrients, for example, can produce macroalgae. Macroalgae can smother seagrass. It can reduce the amount of light the seagrass receives. So all of these factors happening in combination are not good for the health of our estuary, for the Thames. That's why we're working, looking at restoring this plant. But what's so important about it is it's the way it creates a habitat. So seagrass is a marine flowering plant, but when it comes together and grows together, it creates these meadows which can then provide shelter for wildlife, nursery grounds for fish, and also can act as a tool in our fight against climate change in the way that they can trap carbon. These kinds of habitats do provide so many services, not just to wildlife, but to us. Hopefully we'd see higher numbers of fish, a greater diversity of fish, seahorses, sharks, being able to use those habitats and come back in greater numbers. Clearer, cleaner waters, that's a long term, it's ambitious and restoration is challenging, but that's definitely what we're aiming for. And hopefully those seeds then germinate and that's the beginning of a new meadow. <laughs>